All right, and welcome everyone to the much anticipated, somewhat long overdue session three of our Stars Without Numbers adventure entitled Dianima Inferni, run by myself with these five really cool dudes who put up with me <laughs> every other week, and it's been great. And hopefully, we'll be getting to a more regularly scheduled program, playing a little bit more consistently weekly as uh i'm a little i've got a little more free time in my life right now so i'm gonna use it as much as i can but without further ado we're just gonna go around the table have everyone quickly introduce themselves tell us who they are and who they are playing and then i'm gonna give a brief session intro to set the scene and then we will dive into what this intrepid crew is going to do so svan profess hex Drubaka, neon and charles take it away Okay, I'm Svankansen. Uh, I'm playing Molly, which is, uh, I always forget it. It's not Hedgehog, uh, Street Kid. Um, oh, Urchin. Urchin, thank you. No, no, no. Yes. Street Hedgehog. That's canon now. <laughs> In the system, they call them Street Hedgehogs. <laughs> okay, it's. Uh, steal fast. Formerly from a space station, formerly from the military now runaway and technician beautiful i'm professor hex uh, as always i'll be playing narcissa koppel otherwise known as sis uh she is the, the child of a redemption bishop uh who was drafted into the um the uh I guess the the Crusaders is that is that what I'm thinking of? Crusaders yes. of Vindication, yes. Yes, um, and is privately struggling with both her faith and um, burgeoning uh, psychic abilities, uh, both of which kind of threaten to, to crack at any moment. And she's an echidna. Rebecca. I'm Drew. I am playing Eberhard Fuchs a Ebb. Uh he is a uh he's the pilot of the ship and he is uh uh formerly uh rich boy uh now fairly scarred up. Uh he's actually got like a lot of cybernetics. Uh he uh, we got into a pretty bad scrape at some point during our uh, uh, our trials uh, before we broke away from the Vindicators. But he's as strong as ever, emotionally. Maybe even physically. Good. Probably stronger physically. Neon. Uh, I'm playing Nova Von Grimborn. He came from a basically a royal household that owns mines on the planet of Tetsu. Teus. Yeah. Teus. Uh, <laughs> and basically he was raised by a mercenary that works for the mines and learned to survive because of them, because his family didn't really give him much of the time of the day. So here he is. Good. Charles. Uh, I'm Charles. I'm playing Lucian von Ordo, a young nobleman from a house that was declared heretics by the uh by the um uh oh, I'm, oracles I'm, of redemption I'm, I'm, oracles of redemption yes and uh uh he was taken in uh, to a monastery for uh uh re-education and indoctrination uh but now he's broken away with the with the rest of the crew and uh uh He's uh, everything that he was taught in the monasteries has been cast into doubt, and he still has that burning question about what was behind uh, the fall of his uh, noble house, and he really uh, that really chafes at him, and he, he would like to reclaim his honor in some way. I like that, I like the use your use of the word chafes. It's very yes. good, fantastic. <laughs> and of course, I am Darewolf, the game master. It's been six months for our crew since you managed to escape from the Crusaders of Vindication. The planning for such an escape, the organization 
secret messages, the quiet conversations between you and the others, the other, well, four that came with you. Literal years to plan. There was a moment where each of you realized now was the time, and you had a choice. You had a choice to continue onward with the plan or to back out. And I believe in that moment, none of you hesitated. You stripped off all of your armor, all of your gear, you dropped your weapons, and effectively ran, ran through the streets, ran through the streets of the city that you were, that you were in. And eventually you met up with an old contact, an old contact of little Ebonhearts, little Fuchs, back from when, well, he was a little noble instead of a runaway. Morena. Morena, who after being released by you all, all those years ago, has built up a small little empire of her own, trading, smuggling, some somewhat nefarious things now and again. Part of it out of desperation and necessity, part of it out of resentment for what the oracles and the crusaders did to her, her friends, her own family, and the family she had sworn herself to. But with your own ship now, this strange ship that is unlike anything, even during your times with the Crusaders of Vindication that any of you have seen, this has been your home. The last six months have been jumping from place to place, gaining and gathering what supplies you could, doing little odd jobs now and again for different folks and small organizations. And you find yourselves now in the shadow of a large asteroid in, in this asteroid belt. So it is August 15th, 3210. You are in the shadow of Erdis 8's asteroid belt. Specifically, the asteroid known as E652A. This is the largest asteroid of the belt, an asteroid that is rich in raw materials and minerals. And from time to time, different crews will risk trying to dock or land on the asteroid to mine. But the asteroid is known to be somewhat unstable, so many of those crews do not make it. But if you are to make it, profit. Your profit. There was a message you received recently. It came from Morena, and it was a bit fuzzy. Aoife had done her best to clear it up, but all she could manage was the audio. The audio was as following. I have a job for you. A simple smash and grab on Teus. The client is looking for a particular case of refined thread scene. As always, if you want the job, respond with the code word and I'll send the details to you directly. It has been six months of odd jobs, running, hiding and still trying to discover all the secrets aboard this strange man's ship. The same man who talked to himself, whom you saw these weird sort of shadowy outlines, these psychic shadows. Aoife scratches her head and turns to whomever is by the comms. Well, we've got enough fuel to get us there and back, and at least back to Morena's if we have to, but if we don't make this happen, we're going to be adrift. So... At least my vote, my vote is that we take it. Anyone else? And we're going to open our scene in the, the kind of cockpit, kind of cockpit of of the, the condor, as we've come to know it. Cockpit of the condor. And I'm actually going to pivot you guys over. And I'm curious, with this message having been recently received, which of you would have been maybe on the bridge on the main kind of deck of the of the vessel waiting for such a message uh i definitely would have been i'm the pilot you ebert hard would be sitting in the, the pilot's chair at where perhaps monitoring your sort of your your that's a very light gravitational field around this large asteroid and the ship's just kind of hiding in the shadow and you're just every so often you'll use some of the small little adjusters these little like puffs of air 
They kind of just keep the ship stable so that as it slowly rotates, you just always are staying in that shadow as it rotates away from you. But she, uh, she was standing right next to you, Aoife, who used to have purple hair and recently has dyed her hair pink. Uh, wears it in these kind of pigtails from time to time. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. But she is looking down at this fuzzy, blurry sort of image. You can just barely make out the outline of a, of a person's face. And then she's just staring down at it. But she does. She looks over to you, Eb. And she asks the question again. Well, little Eb, what do you think? We take it? Try our chances elsewhere. Um, I'm in. Money's money. And we need it. We need it bad. <laughs> Indeed. Captain? Thoughts? Uh, well, we don't really have the required vac suits to toy around with the asteroid at the moment, so we need a job to get the vac suits to be able to make even more money. So, at least my vote would be to take the job and start from there. Nods, nods, nods. Looks over at Lucian. You're quiet, which is normal for you, but I'd love your opinion. Uh, Lucian had been sitting, like, towards the back uh, with the signet ring of his family, just kind of twisting it and looking at it, mm -hmm. and he was only really half listening to to what came in. And uh, and he, he, he answers, uh, what? Yes, yes, of course. Of course. Of course we should take it. Um, we're going to run out of supplies otherwise. Hmm. Desperation. As is always our tradition, I suppose. Hmm. But we can't run forever. Why not? But what are the alternatives? We fight? Should, 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 we, should we try to fight them? That, that, that no. would be suicide. But we can't keep going on like this. I don't know. It what seems about to that be working for us, all right. If you call this working. What about... What about that, mis that mysterious planet that that the former captain of the... of the ship mentioned? Were we ever able... <sighs> has anyone ever been able to, to look more into that? Have we been able to learn anything more? Aoife, she rubs her her forehead like she's very annoyed with this. There you go on again about some mysterious planet or ship, whatever the fuck it was. Look, these four planets, this system, this is what we've got, okay? This is what we have, right? And if you keep talking about far off distant places, you're going to drive yourself insane. You know, I'm even beginning to think you might be a heretic. But if there's something out there, I mean, there may, we're all there may heretics. Be a... Technically, not not in our hearts. <laughs> uh, Molly says as she enters, uh... and also, you know, I've mentioned multiple times that our engine is massively overspecced for our system to travel. This must be capable of something else. So there must be something out there. Well, I. I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just. Wouldn't know where to start. And all I'm saying is that if there is another planet out there, maybe we could stop running, start building something. Okay, well, first off, we need money to even go on such a venture. Or we're not going to get anywhere if we're floating in the middle of space for all eternity and eventually dying of suffocation. So, <laughs> uh, money first, then we can decide on those ventures later. So we build up a better ship or maybe steal a better one. At the mention of suffocation, um, Freddy, who has become a bit of the ship's uh, comedian, walks in going, oh, 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 I can't breathe. Oh, I just... <laughs> you know, Captain, you've just got the best sense of humor. And I got to tell you, just you know, joking about dying in the void of space. It's just, I mean, just really, you know, I, I haven't even had my morning cup of coffee. And I got to tell you, I just, I already feel alive. Don't even need to have a cup of coffee anymore. Uh, by the way, wanted to where the hell is molly yes you i need your help the ship's navigational systems are once again on the fritz so i was hoping you could poke around a little bit and get those fixed because i was trying to map out a destination that is in the shadow of a giant asteroid that's probably gonna kill us so 
got 10 seconds. That'd be great. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, sure thing. I mean, nothing awesome. else to work on. Yes. I'm a little bit short on spare parts, though. I mean, we are. So keep that in mind. When I'm down to six. So, yeah. Six. Six yeah, what? Six, six boxes of them. Great. So, uh, yeah, perfect. if something else breaks, let's try to grab someone on our way out from whatever work this is. Just we have, we have grab a big machine right? or something. Just get the space duct tape, all right? That works every time. Hey, you, oh my god, Captain, Captain, why didn't I think about space duct tape? I mean, this is why we put you in charge, because I mean, hey, I mean, uh, look at me, dumb me over here, just uh, sitting around, you know, not even using my brain, and you're over there talking about space duct tape. Aoife looks across at him and says, Freddy, shut the fuck up. Just, just shut the fuck up, all right? <laughs> let's just get let's just get, the, get it fixed. Molly, thank you for your hard work. Ebb, see if you can plot a course to Teus. Sounds like that's what we're doing. Um... Sorry, Captain, not to step on your toes or anything, but uh, yeah, anyway, um, great. So as that's all going on, we're actually going to cut over to the sort of the galley area of the ship where you can, you know, you've got food, little like uh, MREs, um, you know, rehydrated, rehydrated beans, things like that. You know, it's nothing too fancy, um, but it's, it's enough to sustain you for a while. And... We're going to move over to, to, to Sis here. And uh, Sis, you've been having these just very intense flashes of things that haven't happened but feel like they're going to. And those flashes have involved large, dark, black ships in the void of space. Some flashes have involved systems that look completely unlike the system that you're in. Planets, people. In one of these particular flashes, these sort of almost visions that you've been having, you saw a very, very tall, humanoid-looking person that had three fingers instead of four, large thumbs pointed ears, and a very large oblong head that seemed to reach out as though it was offering its hand to you. And you were filled with both fear, delight, and a little bit of excitement. And you are just coming off of one of these very vivid, I mean, it, it feels to you as though you are looking at your cup of rehydrated beans, your spoon in hand, and then suddenly there's a giant alien person reaching down to like be like welcome sort of thing right and then you come back and you just see your spoon but it's a very jarring experience and what i'd like you to do in this situation actually is just to kind of uh, i want you to give me a physical saving throw if you wouldn't mind just give me a quick physical saving throw to see how you've reacted to this most recent sort of physically reacted to it all right you've failed you are actually gasping for air in this moment. It's almost as though you were so shocked by this vision. You were physically gasping for air. And you feel a very light hand on your shoulder. And you hear a familiar voice. It is Anna, the quote-unquote medic, sometimes therapist of the group. Sissy, is, is everything all right? <sighs> Uh, I'm fine. Just uh, had a moment of <clears throat> uh, this, this, uh, this food. Sometimes it travels down the wrong, the pipe, so to speak. I just need a moment. Are you, are you seeing things again, my friend? I told you that that has been taken care of. I have not dealt with any of those uh, visions in some time. Everything is is proceeding normally. Everything is fine. Thank you for your concern. If you ever need to talk, just know that 
Just know that I am here for you, as I am for everyone else. I, I do appreciate that. Thank you. I overheard the captain and the others talking about a possible job. Perhaps we should join them on the bridge and at least give our two cents. Is to say credits. <laughs> ah, yes, sir. Very, very troll. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, I will. I will join them on the bridge. I just need a moment. I will step into the washroom. Uh, of will course. you do something with, with this, please? Thank you. She gives you a very long look. Even if you yourself this don't look at her, you can feel her look at you. Concern. There's just that sort of air of concern. And then you hear the door slide open. She steps through and then it slides closed, giving you a moment to collect yourself. And I'd like to just for a few moments stay with you sis and just sort of follow like where do you go in this moment what do you do um she will unsteadily back away from i guess the sort of communal like nostromo style table mm -hmm. uh in, in the in the galley um and attempt to sort of like stagger away towards a washroom and realize that she's not going to make it she will rush over to a nearby sink and just she will blow chunks mm-hmm and as you, as you blow chunks into the sink, it is a lot, a lot that goes out there. And um, you feel a little bit better, just a little bit better afterwards. Still very queasy in this moment, but a little bit better. There is a sort of reflective surface on some of the cabinetry. Um, it's a kind of like a stainless steel. It's very polished. But as you, as you look up, the briefest of moments you can see your reflection but it is not you looking back at you it is that alien-like head with the very pointed almost elf-like ears and it smiles at you the blink it's gone and it's now you looking very pale in this moment do with that as you see fit but we're going to pivot back over to the bridge you can join us when sis feels ready to do so uh, Freddy has moved back over to the navigation. He's asked for Molly's help uh, working in the little navigation area off to the port side of the ship. But what else do you guys want to discuss? What is the, the plan to head off to, well, to this quote-unquote red planet, as it were? Nova, didn't you... You're from Teus, correct? Yes. You uh... know anything about the area that we're... Supposed to meet a marine ant? Well, we haven't given the assignment yet of where it could be on Teus at the moment. So until we give the code word, uh, I will, do not know where we'll be meeting. Hmm. So it, since we are, I'm assuming, accepting the job, we can get the information now. What even is the threat sign? What is it used for? That is a phenomenal phenomenal mm. question and we're going to make one of our uh our first rolls uh of the game we're going to have someone whoever wants to roll a no check i'm gonna have somebody roll no as it were oh, crap uh, yeah um See what people know about you can also I'm... roll trade i would accept trade as well uh i have a pretty good trade mm -hmm. i'm more well, of I'm a do a... i'm more of a doer than a knower mm-hmm so who want you want to go for the trade aspect? Uh yeah, I'm at zero with that's, trade. That's not bad. I mean go yeah. for it. There's nothing bad about it. Go right ahead. Yeah. How do I roll that? Uh so you click go... on your shit on the skill. Good work. Um, if you have it under edit, it won't work. So there's a little pencil in the upper right hand corner. You have to click that yes. pencil. If it's highlighted yellow, there it's in go. edit mode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. So you just gotta click it and you're good. Then click yep. on the skill. Okay. Oh and this is a this is going to be a now remind me again. Do I tell you what the difficulty is? Or do I just have the difficulty in my head? What's the standard? How do you guys normally do it? Oh. Honestly, it, it depends on the, the the DM, but in general, usually they don't tell us difficulty. Okay. 
Well, I'll just keep that difficulty to myself then. I'll let you know later on. I'm used to playing uh, Star Trek Adventures where I'm like, it's you're gonna need three successes. Yes, that's a, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> uh, which attribute am I gonna be using with this? Uh, this would be intelligence. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm definitely more intelligence than intelligence seven than I am wise. So bad news. You here? Okay, good news, bad news. You know. There's a couple of different things that it could be used for, but you're not specifically sure. Like you've heard some rumors, but you don't really, you don't really know. So you failed, unfortunately. You're not really sure. You're like, I've heard that it's been used for like fuel on some like old mining equipment, I think. But also maybe it was used as like medicine. I, your 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 knowledge about it is all over the place. That basically you don't know shit. So right, you, 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 basically role play that as you see fit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've heard it used as fuel. Um, I just honestly, I don't, I don't a hundred percent know. Yeah. Fuel doesn't add up too much because unless it's like radioactive, is it? Um, uh, because otherwise a case of it wouldn't be worth much, but if it is radioactive, then yeah. That will explain it. Would anyone like to assist on this? I'll let you assist after the fact. Would anyone like to assist? Does anyone have any applicable skills they think could could work? Either trade or know that they'd like to attempt. Fix? Could work? I mean, the technician? Uh -huh. Materials? I don't know. I think that's... Hmm. I might be able to contribute with yes. no and have something to say. So as I walk in. basically, yeah, if you want to walk in and you hear them discussing this material, I think that's a great way for you to enter into the scene. Yes, yes absolutely. Go ahead and you may do so. Okay, so what do you? What would you like me to do? Uh, I'm gonna have you roll a uh, a no check for us. It's gonna be a little okay. bit easier for you um, since you uh, said you had might know, but yeah, go for it. Okay, well, it's, the, it's all up to the dice. It's all up to the dice. Oh, yeah, it's better. Nine, perfect. So, actually, sis, you are aware of what Drezazine is sometimes used for. Drezazine can be used for as an old-style fuel source. So if you were to liken this to, say, modern society, our, our society here, this would be like dirty fuel, like really like, like diesel fuel, things like that. It's an old fuel source. However, in this particular system, that fuel source is no longer used because it is so volatile, and it is oftentimes used nowadays for bombs, um, blowing things up. Um mm -hmm some heretics in fact you would actually know this way we'll describe this is that you've dealt with this sort of material before in some of your special ops that you did with the crusaders of vindication and you know you've actually maybe captured some of this material at times maybe it was a solo mission or a mission you did by yourself without the rest of your squad uh, but you have mm -hmm. personally dealt with this before uh terrorists at least those they would define as terrorists by the oracles of redemption who uses this okay then i guess you would hear the of the door to the cockpit open up and sis would walk in and she'd say um that material you know uh, speaking of is <coughs> excuse me uh is um it's a dirty fuel it's used for explosives uh oftentimes by terrorist organizations and other ne'er do wells, let's call them. Let's see, so freedom fighters. That's like my kind of people. Well, freedom is a concept. <laughs> well, it's better than whatever we've been fed our entire lives, anyway. Yeah, carrying explosives sounds like kind of a big deal, doesn't it? Yeah, let's hope we get some extra for ourselves. Might be nice. How much are we talking about? No details, right? No details yet. We should... uh, yeah, we should ask. Hey, sis, can you send the code word? Yes, I can do that. Good. Code word is a kidnap. No. Just She'll move over to the terminal. Move over to your terminal. You're able to send it. 
Aoife is looking very uncomfortable about this whole situation, um, and she's actually been eyeballing you, Molly. Um, Aoife has... She spent a lot of time with you. She's also kind of a techie at times, um, and so you and her have spent a decent amount of time. Maybe you've even become friends. That's up to you. But she is uh, giving you this look like, I don't really like this anymore. Like, carrying around explosive material, like bombs. Like, she's, she's not a supporter of the oracles of redemption but she doesn't also doesn't like people blowing up other people so she's got a, a little bit of austeristic heart so she's kind of like eh? she's giving you that look she gives you sometimes like i don't like this like you've got this ability to speak to each other and she's like i don't i don't like this you should say something she wants you to say something because she knows nova won't listen to to you to her but she might listen to you so she's like um um, you know, if it's a good amount, perhaps we could keep it for ourselves and use it for mining. <laughs> well, sorry, I kind of like explosives. Didn't, didn't Sis say this was highly volatile? Yeah, which is the kind of stuff you use to blow up things like yes. asteroids. Look, we're on a spaceship. Yeah, this thing can blow up at any moment for no goddamn reason. I mean, what? is it that unstable? Is it? Or, or we can try and get some extra and sell it. If we're going to be carrying it at all, I should hope that the stabilizers on the ship are holding up, unlike, unlike last week. Uh, the mention of stabilizers holding up, the ship shutters a little bit and everyone has to grab onto their respective railings <laughs> armrests uh you hear a sort of d dull kind of thud from uh from one of the from the kind of the meeting room in the in the center of the ship you hear a ow and then you hear someone getting up and then harry steps through sort of harry is He's slowly regaining his personality over the last six months, but he is still very robotic in ways. He's sort of doesn't really have too much of a personality. He follows orders really well. You tell him to do something, he'll do it. You'll be like, hey, scrub that until it's clean. He will literally scrub it until his like hands start to bleed. Um, and then he'll be like, he'll keep scrubbing because it's bleeding. Um, just not a really bright guy, but he gets up and as he steps out, you see he has a cut on his forehead where he must have like nailed his head on the corner of a, a table or, or something, you know, a corner of a small little desk or something like that in there. Uh. And, and he looks over at, uh, at Anna and he goes, ow. She goes, Eddie, what have you done? Uh, not again. I have told you to be careful. You must always be holding on to something. Everyone uh, forgive me. I must excuse myself to see to Harry in the medical bay. Come now, come now, Harry. I will make sure it is, yes, I know that it hurts. And her and Harry move off and head towards the uh, the medical bay to see to his cut. Um, we yeah. should really get some magnetic boots. Or perhaps fix the stabilizers. But, you know, magnetic boots, boots are cheaper. Uh, probably. We also got to get new medical supplies, which is also another thing I have to put into the logs. Uh. Well, yeah, we, need we need food to, to actually a... wait the pairs. Wait, the pairs? Yes, yeah. sorry about that. I was pulling a double at the at the helm and got peckish. Uh, you know I liked it, man. Didn't you leave any? Yeah, well, remember the strawberries last month? Ah, but those were gonna spoil. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Turnabout's fair play. As long as y'all don't. We you didn't know. have strawberries. What are you talking about? That's fantastic. Your please cons do. your console please don't beeps. Keep any food from me. Your console beeps, sis, and you're getting a data packet that's coming in. Incoming data, Captain. Put it put it on my screen. So there is a small little mining station. Um, it is actually an, an older station um, near the equator of the planet. Now, the planet is most unstable around its equator. 
Um, that's where there's a lot of earthquakes and stuff. It almost seems as though the planet Theus is in the process of like almost like being split open as though it was like a, a lime that you had cut and you were like going to break it apart or peach. You're going to do that. It's kind of what's happening to Theus right now. And there's an old mining station that is, it's not operational, but it still has personnel there. Um, and mainly it's in the process of being broken down and uh, basically stripped of all its anything useful uh, on it. But apparently there is a warehouse on this small station that has, well, the material, the, the barrels you need. You only, they only want one barrel. One barrel. And think of it like an oil drum of this stuff is all they're asking for is one barrel. And based on the data packet, um, there's pretty detailed notes in there about there's only a handful of guards. Um, they're mostly there, you know, they're not really paid well, so you can probably just talk them down, you know, very, very quickly. They shouldn't put up too much resistance. You know, a lot of them are probably sick with the Red Death anyway, so, you know, they should be pushovers. And effectively, it's just a, this job should be super easy. Don't worry about it. It's probably fine. Do we know who owns that mining station? Is it like a private interest or does it belong to like the that information? Oracles? That information is interestingly enough not included in the data packet. I wish I wish we knew who we were stealing from. Do we have any way of finding that out? Absolutely. Absolutely. You could start doing some research. There's a there's a data network that you could log into. The problem with Every time you log into the, think of it as like the Oracle net. It's like the internet, but for oh, the oracles, damn. you can log into it. But every time you log into it, you do risk being discovered. So it's a, it's a risk versus reward. All kind right. Like a regular internet. Yeah. Like a regular internet. <laughs> so basically. I feel like this one might be worth it. You would uh. make a, you would make a hacking check. Uh, that would be um, int and program. And if you if you do it well, then you can get an answer to a specific question and not get discovered. Um, but uh, if you fail, then you might get discovered, which would be bad. And remember, you don't have a lot of fuel or supplies, so Ooh. is it worth it? I'd say mm. let's. We're, we're, we've been off the grid for quite a while. Let's. We can get to planets, and then we can discover the data using one of the planetary terminals rather than risking where our ship is currently. But, uh, Lucian, maybe you would know, you're, you're well connected. You, you used to know important people. Mm, true, but <clears throat> they would, they were all in the nobility, in noble circles. I, I'd rather not them, any of them catching wind of who I am or who we are. Fair enough. I, I'd i say let's... Does it specify where this... Uh, where the outpost is? What nearby town there is? Oh, it is very isolated. Like, about 50 to 60 miles away from any of the close like close towns. And it's on the opposite side of the planet from where you grew up, Neon. Nova, okay. excuse me. Yep, opposite. How heavy would the uh, full barrel of this be? I, I gather we have seen at least. You know what? Barrels. You know what? That's a really good question. How heavy is an oil barrel? I'm gonna do a little research. That's a great question that I didn't expect to get asked. Uh, uh, they they weigh about five gallons. Three hundred pounds. We probably about three hundred pounds. Oh, so we could lift it between two with a lot of back pain and yes. four with. More reasonable. Okay, we will need rope or straps or something. Well, yeah, we'll make do what we have. Uh, if not, it's at least a leg day, right? I guess. <sighs> There's a lot of barrels there, they say, but they only need one. We probably should steal more than one. How unstable is this thing? Who knows until we find out, right? <laughs> oh, God. This sounds like a terrible idea. So okay. would like to roll I a no we... on this. Now that you know what the material is used for, if you want to roll a no on this, I would totally allow that. 
Oh, someone please do it. I'm not that kind of person. I don't, I don't have no. Ah, sis, you would know that this substance has become highly unstable in recent years because it hasn't been produced in over a decade. So the substances that still exist have been left to ferment. And, uh, you know, sometimes the barrels get rusty. Sometimes, you know, it's uh, when it's exposed to like other elements, like random red dust in the air, it can become highly volatile. So, you know, they've been no, there have been old stores of this stuff that you've known that have gone up in flames and consumed like several square miles. You can share that information or just ignore it. It's up to you. <laughs> you know what they say about wine, yeah? Yeah, this, if they just will. This would be a particularly good vintage in terms of destruction. <laughs> Sounds like my type of uh, my type of wine. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay, so. No shooting, no guns. <laughs> you know, at least we have a nice big cargo space, so I won't destroy the entire thing. Uh, yeah, we just have terrible stabilizers. We have will... terrible stabilizers. Uh, you've said our, you've said the magic word. I'm gonna have everyone, everyone. I'm actually gonna have you roll a quick evasion check. That's what we're gonna do. Just a quick little evasion check. It'll be fun. Uh, I see everybody. Everybody roll, right? Ah, uh, there you go. Everybody roll. Yeah. Perfect. God, I love it. I love all of this. I love everything that's happening right now. Uh, Makes me so happy. Makes me so happy. Is that everyone? Uh, there, there we go. So literally, at the mention of at least we have you know stabilizers, the whole ship shudders. Everyone gets sprawled to the floor and just falls down um you hear uh ifa and uh you hear ifa and freddy go ah fuck damn it ah, i told you not to lean over me like that why weren't you grabbing onto the fucking console you gotta stabilize yourself because the stabilizers don't work very funny very very funny freddy you're just just fucking hilarious aren't you all right hand me the fucking wrench and uh they go after a little bit but everyone can stand back up all right all right let's let's just get there before we end up sta unstabilizing out of space for some damn reason i suggest we move stabilizers I suggest we move stabilizers to the top of the list. <laughs> he said it again. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Oh, I'm just kidding. No, 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 I'm just kidding. All right. How... Okay, wait. Do you have spare parts, any of you, by any chance? No. Okay, I have 600 credits worth of spare parts. I must be able to build some kind of, you know, thing with coils that keeps something, something like a barrel. Like you know, very stable shape. Yeah, like some truck absorber. Ah, interesting. Three hundred credits worth of, of spare parts. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So you want to try to build something. Is that correct? Yes. So let's talk about this. Should that be a work expert? Fix. 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 The that would be fix. Yes. Thing. Okay. So I'm going to have fix. you do a fix fix check this is going to take the place over the several days it takes you to get to Teus. but why don't you make a fix check as you as okay. you start your journey i think you're pretty uh, smart there. it's probably not gonna be too difficult so my question here is do we need wow! to... oh there you go well let me tell you this much you build the most stable device you ever seen the uh that, that egg experiment that uh, that Tesla did where, like, you take magnets and it makes the egg stand up. It basically defies gravity. That's what you make. It's super cool. I'll send you the link after the session. Uh, it's a pretty cool experiment. But, uh, uh, yes, you were going to say something, Nova. Is Do we have to make any sort of drive checks or anything for the flying? Not for now. Okay. I'm not going to make you do that. It's like, it, 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 I, think, I think Eb knows how to at least get you from point A to point B. If you're getting hunted so. down by a capital ship, absolutely right. but just making sure luckily you guys didn't you didn't log into oracle net so you guys are gonna be okay for now for now as it were right so we're gonna we're gonna land probably at one of the at least closest cities to this isolated outpost get the information and go from there 
really good roll, Molly. That was a really good roll. That was like nearly perfect. Well played. Yeah, it's an insane roll. That was an insane roll. Basically the best possible. This is literally, uh, you're one off the best possible. It was amazing. So how many spare parts did I spend? All of them? I would say in this experiment, you spent half of them. Okay, excellent. I still have three left. All right. Off we go. So as you watch the ship head off, uh, it departs away from the asteroid. We see the, the drive kick in. Ship starts to kind of shudder a little bit, but then takes off. I'd like to pivot to the back of the cockpit area where Lucian has been standing, and uh, your Anna has approached, and she she's sort of she dresses very proper. She dresses very almost regal without being like noble. And in the few interactions you've had where maybe you needed someone to look a little bit more well-to-do, she has acted the role part very well. Um, this is sort of what she's fallen into in her young adult, but still adult life. And she approaches Lucian. Lucian, you have a moment to speak, perhaps in private. Of course. Yes. The meeting Excuse room? us. And uh, she steps back allows you to follow her into the meeting room as well. I wanted to speak to you in private, Lucien. I have what? some concerns about I understand the doctor-client privilege, but sis a few months ago she expressed some concerns to me about visions she was having. I wanted to ask you, as you are the quietest of everyone, and I think the most observant, have you noticed any strange behavior from her? Staring off into the distance, um, talking to herself, anything at all, Lucia? Um, have, will we say that Lucian has? Um, tell me, or Lucian. I don't want to. I don't want to take any agency away from uh, sis or anything. Okay. Uh, she has looked somewhat distracted to me, but I, I thought perhaps it was just the strain of us being on the run, just scraping to get by. She but, has her hands folded in front of her. She's sort of standing with her hands crossed, looking very, very proper in this moment. Perhaps I am being overly cautious. Though our times with the Crusaders were try, they did teach me to care about my brothers and sisters. I do care about all of you. And you oh. have ex extensive medical training as well. If if you say that you think that something is wrong with Sis, then I, I think we should trust your instinct. Has she, has she been reluctant to speak to you about this? Have you, have you tried asking her about this? I recently did try to ask her, and she told me it was all under control, but as you said, I have extensive medical training. I do. I can tell when someone is lying to me, but I can also tell when it is not the right time to press them. All I ask is that you look after her, not to spy on her, but to be there for her if she, if she needs someone. We have all made a decision to, to run, to break away from the lives that were chosen for us. And thus, we are the only ones we can trust in. So I want to know that I am not the only one looking after her. That I must look after all of you as well. Of course. Thank you for coming to, to me with this. You are... You are a level-headed man, Lucien. Your story that you have shared with me is one filled with tragedy, yet you do not let it consume you. And I have come to appreciate that, respect it, admire it even. And in this moment, her hand has 
they, she's like broken her hands apart though they were mm. clasped and she's she's almost doesn't even seem to realize she's like reaching slowly like just very very like just subtly towards you like her hand is starting mm. to kind of reach towards you and in this moment as she does this and and she's looking at you how does lucian react to her so uh lucian is still pretty closed off so yeah. as as he realizes the hand is getting close he would uh you know kind of quickly uh, uh take it away but um you know um like take a physical step back with, in this moment or, right or or, with, with, or not something that, that like he would be recoiling from her but uh, he would find something to do with the hand yes. uh to to uh, she as he turns like ever that. so slightly if you turn mm -hmm. ever so slightly she suddenly realizes what her hand was doing and mm -hmm. retracts it back to that clasped thank you lucian and for it, taking a moment to to hear me I ask that not to keep this from everyone, but I do not wish to cause alarm amongst our brothers and sisters. Just, I know that you will. I know you have everyone's best interest in mind. Thank you. And she just nods, turns, looks a little embarrassed in this moment. Right. And sort of quickly in her kind of professional, regal way moves off and heads towards right. the starboard side of the ship. What does Lucian do? And, and, and Lucian was, went as if he was going to say one final thing, but then when she kind of moves off, mm -hmm. he kind of falls in suit too. And, uh, uh, he's, he, you know, he's kind of thrown off by the, the show of, uh, of affection, mm -hmm. you, you know, and he, uh, yeah. straightens himself up, uh, you know, gets a stoic look on his face and, and returns back into the, uh, where everyone else was like is that. sis in in still in the cockpit with everyone else you tell me yeah so as he comes in he'll just kind of try and be unobtrusive unobtrusive and uh you know stand to the side but but uh we will see him uh looking over at sis occasionally regarding her mm -hmm. i like that i like that but as we come back to the cockpit the ship has been traveling for a little bit of time at this point and perhaps several hours go by the crew's going about molly you are starting to work on your stabilization uh platform so that the drezazine will not explode hopefully um ifa has been working with freddy to try and repair uh since molly just didn't come and help because molly got distracted by another project which seems on point and in character for molly that 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 uh that freddy was like hey i need some help over here and molly's like no problem and then she doesn't help um and so ifa went over and was helping and so she's got her head underneath the console and is still kind of nicking around with it and freddy has walked over next to ebb and uh and he is he is uh he's he's just He's hovering. And sometimes, Eb, when you're flying, Freddy will hover. And he'll do those things that people that are like, they're trying not to critique what you're doing, but they're like, it's it, they're like physically making motions. Like, oh, what are you? And then like making like good kind of sounds, but no actual words are coming out. And the ship will kind of shake a little bit. I'm like, well, you know, if you stabilize. But can, I, can I help you? Freddy? Oh yeah! Oh no! I just I was just admiring uh, your your flying. I just thought you were doing a really good job um, of you know um, you know uh, helping me get my steps in um, you know because I keep going left and right because the ship's not flying in a straight line. Um, I was yeah, just, it's I was not just... flying in a straight line. Yeah. I'm doing everything that I possibly can. Yeah, but just... to try and well, save us I... as much fuel as I possibly can. No, so then I mean straight lines is the shortest distance between two points. But I digress. Um, yeah, yeah so I was thinking, uh, uh, except uh, in curved space. Right. Um, uh, there's this thing called gravity that we yeah. have to avoid. Okay. Uh, I, look, I'm doing my best, man. Yeah, gravity. Gravity's made me? up. That's uh, that. That doesn't actually exist. But anyway, um, yeah. So, um, Oracle, Oracle heresy. Uh, that's what it is. But yeah. So I was just curious why you haven't. Well, you have an increased power to uh, thruster two, um, because the, the ship is sort of uh, dragging the starboard. I was, I was curious if maybe there's a reason behind that for you. Uh, um, I checked yeah. the reading. Yeah. Uh, actually, if you want to give me a, let's see here. What is the pilot check? Give me a pilot check in this moment, please. There we go. Little pilot check. This is where you're all going to take damage, and the crew dies, session one, by crashing into each other. Uh, is that Dex? Uh, yes. 
damn good. Damn good. And you mentioned gravity, Ebb. The reason that you're not using Thruster 2 is because you're currently actually leveraging gravity to slingshot yourself and conserve pool. Uh, pool? Fuel. There it is. Fuel. To conserve pool. Um, like uh, all, all the sticks and the balls. The cue ball, especially. No. So you're conserving fuel. And you're actually allowing the ship to get caught slightly in the gravitational pull of uh, several smaller asteroids. And you're using those to start to build momentum in space. You're sort of slingshotting around. Very similar to if you've ever watched uh, The Expanse. Or you watch some of our mm -hmm. own actual ships that we send out. And they slingshot around different mm -hmm. planets to gain momentum. Same thing you're doing, but on a smaller scale. I, uh, when he mentions Thruster 4, uh, uh, Ebb kind of stops, takes a deep breath, and then starts explaining the gravitational, uh, 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 equations and whatnot that he's using mm -hmm. to keep, us uh, to keep us from using any fuel on Thruster 4, uh, uh, saving us uh, upwards of 25% of the, the normal fuel cost for this run, uh, running it as running everything as lean as I possibly can. And yes, I am well aware of what Thruster 4 is doing. I'm doing it on purpose. Uh, and I, I show my work. Yeah, good job. Uh, just want to make sure, you know, if I could help or anything, I mean, just don't be a fucking asshole about it. And then he's going to, uh, he's going to wander off away from you. Uh, in this moment and uh, is going to ask Aoife what she's doing and you just hear her go fuck off and he goes yep alright I can tell the what I'm light, not wanted the light in Ebb's uh, cybernetic eye is just like twitching <laughs> like it's it just it's it's not constant and it's 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 very angry like it I like it I like it so Molly's over in her sort of workshop area working Lucian's up there Ebb's piling the ship uh, Sis, would you maintain your position at the console? Would you wander off to find someone else to interact with or take some time to yourself? What would you be up to, Sis, during this journey? I, I think as soon as my business at the comm station was would be done, um, I would um, yeah, sort of like kind of do an Irish exit, just kind of like stand up and just sort of leave the cockpit and having done those um, multiple times myself in, in real life situations they are my favorite exit yeah and then drift back into her quarters as it were mm -hmm. as as sis as you are as you are making your way back to your to your quarters which are conveniently located next to the mess hall um as you enter into the sort of narrow hallway where your your uh where your quarters are there's a man standing there it's harry uh he has a big old bandage on his on his forehead um and he is he is standing in front of your of your quarters just staring at the door just just staring big like world war one bandage around his head you can see just a little bit of red there and he's just staring at the door and he brings his hand up and then he goes he goes tink 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 Tink, 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 and he starts tapping it, and there's this, like he's got a little bit of a longer fingernail, the metal door, so it's just this kind of like this, this ticking noise, this tink, 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 ticking noise, and he just seems really fixated on it. If you're trying to dig through, it's going to take quite a long time. Stops midway through a tank looks over at you company 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 tink 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 company company tink 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 company company i'll slowly company. insert my hand in between his finger and the door he goes to tink but then he sees your hand and he stops brings his hand back to his side What Just, do you mean, company? In there? Slow nod of his head. Uh, she'll, you know, I'll put my hand on, um, on uh, Harry's shoulder, uh -huh. and sort of like, just do it like a gentle, you know, friendly stroke. Like, mm -hmm. 
why don't you sit down, Harry? Uh, take a moment to um, to relax. Yes, I'll I'll deal with company. Yeah, company, company, company needs company needs snacks. Snacks, snacks are good. Snacks, snacks. Why, why yes? Why don't you enjoy snacks. a snack? Snacks. And I will come and see you later. Need snacks. Snacks mm-hmm. for company. Snap. Company always needs snacks. Snacks need to get the snacks for company. And he's going to. He sits down for a moment as you instructed him. He's good at following directions. Then he slowly stands back up, wavers slightly, and then, like, just presses himself against the wall as to not bump into you. And then walks over, uh, taps on the door. Uh, the door slides open. He slips into the galley and starts scrounging for snacks. You are in the hallway. You do. <sighs> She'll take a moment, and then she'll look at the door. Um, she has uh, she has with her uh, the notebook that she's always had and mm-hmm. a sort of old-fashioned um, fountain pen. Um, and she takes the cap off of that, you know, exposing the metal pointed tip, and sort of palms that like a you know, a CQC sort of a knife, right? I mean, basically, yeah. And she will get up against the side of the, on the wall, you know, back, and then the door is here. Mm-hmm. And then she will open it and then sort of retract her hand so that, you know, she's not in the doorway. So as the door, it slides, so that you hit the little button, it slides open, it's just like a... She'll take a moment, see if there's any response. And then she'll slowly sort of snake her head around to look in. Do you snake your head around? Let me ask you this, sis. Do you normally make your bed or leave it unmade? Uh, It's like military neatness made, yes. It is completely a mess. Like someone just got got out of bed. She's going to check, like, you know, SWAT style, all the corners. Empty. No one inside. She's going to step inside and close the door behind her. Do so. And then she will use the fountain pen to sort of pick up some of the um, the sheets, mm-hmm. right? And see if there's any kind of substance or mm-hmm. debris or hair or This would be anything. a notice. Give me a notice check, please. Okay, and the attribute? Uh, this would be... Wisdom. Or it would it be wisdom, normally, for notice? Yes. Wisdom, yes. right? Yes, wisdom. Wisdom, please. Perfect. All right. Here's where things get interesting. Here's where things get interesting. As you go to pick up the sheet, a couple things you notice. Though the sheets, the blanket, are all messy, in the memory foam of the mattress, you can see very distinct hand impressions. They look... They look larger than they should be. And what I mean by it is this like, so imagine your standard human, like your normal, pretty average human hand. It's like the thumb is a little bit stubbier and the fingers are all significantly longer. Kind of like a Slender Man style. And you can see these weird impressions. And as you lift up the blanket, you watch as those impressions slowly come back up and are no longer pressed in. The room itself in this moment feels five to ten degrees colder than it should be for a few moments. And then it seems to go back to normal. You get that chill on the nape of your neck down your spine. Almost as though you can kind of feel this sort of icy breath on your back of your neck. What do you do? (laughs) 
just to be clear, the impressions on the mattress. How many fingers? Three. Three. Including a thumb? Or including a thumb. So three fingers like such. Three fingers and a thumb. And a thumb. Got it. I, think. I can't do it. My fingers won't let me do it. But yeah, like that. Okay. She would... Um, is there... Is there terminal access yeah, in her room? Absolutely. I think she would back up, eyes still on the, you know, the mess of the bed. Mm -hmm. At least 15% irritated that she'll have to make it again. Only 15? That's good for her. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a more pressing concern at the moment. And she will use the terminal to try to, try to do a quick, like, life sign sweep of the ship. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'm not going to make you make a check for this. There are several life signs on board. In fact, there are nine life signs on board the ship, which is the number of life signs there should be. No additional life signs. Okay. Then... Question. The psychic phenomena in this world. Mm -hmm. um, is there, when it is used, is there any telltale signs of that in terms of radiation, in terms of... Let me ask you like, this. Let me ask you this. As a player, do you think your character would know about these signs? Not intellectually, maybe, but in a in a kind of a intrinsic, yeah, like in a like a and and a vague sort of grasping at some truth sort of. So way. you think back specifically to the bar where you met the man right. who's owned this ship, and Nova had mentioned, I believe, seeing outlines. It was Nova that saw the outlines, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. It was Nova. And yes. so, yes, there can be radiation after effects, if you want to use such a term. There can be these psychic psychic radiation, we'll call it. Yes, absolutely. Those things do exist. You may not have a specific term for it, but you know that it is likely it does exist. Yes. Okay. Um, here's what I want to do. I don't think I'm in any position to, like, scan for such signs. I don't have the, the, the like, the technical knowledge or, like, the, the structural knowledge to figure that out. Mm -hmm. But I know someone who might. I'm going to go and, again, backing up out of the room, opening the door, sliding out, closing it. I'm going to take a deep breath. And then I'm going to find, I'm going to go in whatever direction, you know, is the, you know, the quickest path to Molly. Beautiful. Uh, the quickest path would be, uh, let's see here, that would be back through the galley, through the meeting room, where... I'm going to try to avoid the galley, actually, ooh, because ooh. I don't want to bother Harry. And actually, you would have gone out the other door to your room, into the restroom, through there wrapped around, gone to a little bit of a supply closet, and then to your little workshop uh, over on the port side of the ship. We'll pivot over, and you see Molly has a giant uh, egg-shaped metal piece of metal, uh, That and there's some magnets that are around it. It's, like, spinning in the center right now, and it's kind of starting to stand up, and then it falls over, and maybe, Molly, you let out, like, a fuck or something. I don't know if Molly swears. I think she does, but you tell me. I'm not going to yeah. put any words you got. But, yeah, you're in the middle of your experiment right now. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Perfect. Uh, so she, she isn't paying attention, so you will have to speak. Is it supposed to do that? Uh, if we want to kill ourselves, yes. Otherwise, no, it should. 
Oh, delightful. You've made a suicide machine. <laughs> yes, exactly. And at least it needs rare explosives to work. So, you know, we still need to get that part. So both expensive and deadly. Wonderful. Precisely. Molly, I, I, I did not come to uh, criticize your uh, inventions. Actually, I, I had a, a request. Yes. Do you remember one of our earliest missions with the Crusaders? We encountered a a a psychically inclined person. Oh, yes. I forget that one. Jesus, we were so close to writing it. Exactly. Now, Nolva said that that he could see these emanations or some kind of aura. Do you think you could? This perhaps is asking too much. I, I but you are the the saviest person I know with with these things. Is there a way to? build a sensor of some kind to detect this these emanations or is it some kind of radiation or almost like a psychic <sighs> finder uh, I think I mean I've read about those things you know but that's precursor technology uh, very ancient stuff nobody knows how to make it I can make you a Geiger counter but I don't know the same kind of radiation. Uh, well, I mean, I, I could, I could build a temporary one. It will break up down quickly. We didn't have the proper equipment for that, but it should work for a while. But only for mundane radiation. No idea if it work for psychic phenomena. Well, that's it's better than nothing. Uh, I suppose I can isolate. A particular kind of radiation or, or find the absence of certain radiation there, there's a as a way of doing this uh, did you do you think you could create something like that something very short range uh, uh in a matter of days i mean i could make it in 10 minutes but it will last just as long so that's yeah. all i need Other, uh sure there's Meta-wise, there's rules for jury rigging budget device, and they last for one scene and consume a spare part. That this is definitely worth the expenditure, but I don't know if Wolfie thinks it's. Uh, I mean, Geiger counters are not complicated in theory. Is it okay? Absolutely, man. I love this. Yeah, go for it, for sure. Okay. I will spend 15 minutes making a jury rigged uh, wire cut. And let's hope it works. Let's do it. Let's make a fix. Okay. I believe. I got this coming on the way. Yeah. Oh, oh Molly in the clutch! Wow, Molly is the fixer, let me tell you. So Molly, you're able to whip it up in half the time and it's gonna last double the amount of time. So you, it only took you five minutes and it's gonna last for 20. So it was absolutely fantastic. It's a good good little good little piece of technology. It's a little simple uh, counter that would read uh, radiation, uh, any sort of strange, I guess radioactive substances for sure. Absolutely. It's a little tick, 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 kind of noise, right? Yeah. One minute gone with you. Um, we can use it to check if the fuel tanks are leaking too. But if there's no spare time. Yeah. Well, as, as soon as that as soon as that would be done, uh, Sis would, you know, take a look at it and then ask Molly. Great. So this is uh, this can pick up the radiation? Yeah. Yes. One more favor, if you don't mind, if you'll indulge me. Could you come with me to my room? Oh, 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 come. I mean, yes. Yeah, no problem. Uh, just let me stop this. Uh, the screening gag because this is 
spinning weight to fast for comfort. Do, 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 Moment. Do, 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 do. Rotational momentum do. is a bitch. Clang. <laughs> it's gonna work. Okay, but yeah. It's taking time. It's taking time, for sure. All right. So as, uh, as Molly and and uh, Sis head back, I assume you go back the same route that you got there through the bathrooms. So as you open the door, uh, Harry is sitting on the floor of your of your room. Uh, he has um, he has a, a small container of beans uh, that he is uh, childlike spoon dip hum spoon dip hum. He takes up a piece, like lifts it up towards the bed. Uh, and then kind of shakes his head back and forth and then brings it back and eats it again. Harry, please, the the snacks, that, it's a wonderful job you did. Would snacks. you please snacks. go bring the snacks to the snacks. Bridge, bridge crew. Snacks. Go take the snacks to the captain, bridge. Captain wants snacks. Snacks. Yes, the captain would snacks. like the little package. Yes, please snacks. go. Snacks. 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 Huh. Snacks. 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 Uh, Does he usually get in your room? He's gone. <laughs> Harry claims that there was company in my room, and normally I wouldn't give his um, his mutterings any further thought, but, well, let's call it a hunch. Could you, uh, the, the counter, the Geiger counter? Yeah. Please right. operate it yourself. I'm, I'm not too good at this. Yeah. I can make I would, it. I would sort of gesture in the direction of the mattress, like, yeah. hey, let's get a reading. So on you, this. you you maybe do like a, a quick sweep, like so the main little walk area, like the little like path. You've got your little shelves off to left hand, right hand side from your respective left hand side of the map, port side of the ship. You do a quick scan, but as you get to the bed, it's just like it's hitting that like danger radiation levels and uh, you're actually able to take it you kind of make the outline it goes up kind of near the near the ceiling it comes back down and then you move it away from the bed it's not you move it back to the bed it's ticking you move it away from the bed it's not back to the bed it's ticking and it's near to where you remember seeing those handprints there's this radiation but even as you're standing there and it's ticking all the way it's like maximum dangerous level radiation slowly starts to tick not quite as much very slow but it's, it was hitting the right side of the little monitor and now it's just all the way up in the reds a couple moments later it's kind of like the low reds so it seems to be fading quickly but it's definitely there hmm what, wait 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 a second. Why didn't we call Nova for this? You know, <laughs> can't she, you know, say this kind of stuff? Do so we know that actually? There's nothing there. The only, the only I mean, thing that I understand that, that Nova's particularly exceptional at is seeing those emanations from actual creatures. It's not just, I came in here and this was empty. Huh. I mean, well, there was something here, or there is something here. So... Good. We both agree. Yes. So why don't we... Okay. I'll, I'll just press the, the clumps. Uh, Molly presses the clumps. Uh, Nova? We have a psychically soiled bed? You hear over the comms uh, someone going, beans, beans. Snacks. Snacks for Captain Snacks. Yes. Can you go get me the Galaxy Milky Way from the bridge, please? <laughs> Heads back to the galley and starts looking for the Galaxy Milky Way that doesn't exist. Well, it's an actual ice cream flavor. <laughs> but... Tastes like void. Uh, so... Nova, Nova. What? Uh, what? What's wrong? Did we? Are we? Are we expecting another shimmer? What, what is shimmer? Our thrusters getting turned off and us spiraling into endless space. 
Oh, yeah, I'm just doing a good I job. hope not. Uh, look, and uh, this is room. Okay, something I don't know. Something weird's going on, and you're the weird specialist. So, wait, what? Mind what coming you, here? What do you mean, weird specialist? Ah, damn it! Not uh, weird expert or weird master. Just specialist. You study it. I'm not saying you're weird. Study. So I'm not saying no, you're I, not. I I don't understand what you're trying to say, but I will come and see if 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 anyone sold anything, just, just clean it. Psychically. I. What is a psychic? Whatever. I'm coming. As uh, as Nova I, leaves the bridge. I'd like uh, to come to Nova. Says <clears throat> Lucian. As uh, I think I should come too, and he's gonna follow along with you. Love it. Let, talk let me know if anything interesting happens. Uh, Aoife jumps into the captain's chair as uh, as as they both <laughs> exit, uh, and she puts her uh, her put, she puts her feet up like on the uh, armrest, and uh, as uh, as she does so, she says, "Steady as she goes, Helms boy. Steady as she goes." She's lucky we're running out of bullets. Big shit eating grin on her face. If Eb looks back, very playful. He d he does not. Mm. <laughs> She's just lucky we're running out of bullets. Love it. But you two uh, both arrive on the scene at the opposite door of uh, of her uh, of uh, Sis's chambers or quarters, as it were. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, take it away, gentlemen. All right. Well, I got a rifle ready, just in case. <laughs> Psychic BS, whatever. And I'm gonna just open the door. The door and is Lucian open. will be one, one step behind Nova. All right. Nova, you open the door. You see several things. Several things. It's sort of... Remember those kind of glistening outlines that you saw back in that bar... Four or five years ago at this point close to six years ago yes you see a shimmering outline of a very very tall lengthy kind of humanoid it looks like a like a giant almost like its head is almost like scraping the ceiling of this particular room and as you open the door you kind of watch it turn around press both of its shimmery outline hands onto the bed retract them back and it seems as though the face turns towards you sees you seeing it and then the shimmery outline turns to sort of sparkle dust and is gone fuck <laughs> <laughs> great answer yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna oh, close the door oh, uh, illusion's right behind you Fuck. What is it? One second. I'm gonna close the door, and I'm gonna open it up slowly again to see if it came back. Uh, so you two on the opposite side, standing in the restroom, see Nova stick his head in, look around, say "fuck," pull the head back, close the door, and then do it again. Nova, you don't see anything this time. It seems my seems there was something here just a second sort of ago. something <sighs> something big maybe can... as tall as the ceiling D just describe what you saw a figure giant very tall touching your bed with two of his hands yeah and retracting it was very interested in your bed for some reason I like kind of like this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sis, has anything like this happened to you before? Have you noticed anything else strange like this? She takes a slightly longer beat than usual, which may or may not be noticeable depending on mm -hmm. how often you talk to her, and she would say, "No." God, I have a headache. <sighs> I really need that ice cream. You're clanging, when, when, coming from the When did the we get ice cream? 
First, you're telling me there are strawberries that I can't enjoy, and then all of a sudden there's ice cream, and someone is is d d desoiling, defiling my bed in my chambers? Yeah, that's an issue, which I have no idea what that's about. And I, I don't know why I always have these funny feelings in my head, but uh, I have a bad headache right now. Probably just a brain tumor. <laughs> That's great. I'll have Anna check me out later. Then. It's, it's not a tumor. Does, okay, so does, we have a gigantic stalker. If it comes back, it's, it needs to pay rent. I, I don't care if there's whatever, space or magic, whatever the hell it's called, psychic money. Uh, it better pay rent. Psychic money? I appreciate you all having a good chuckle at this, but this is where I sleep, where I live. And there's this thing here. Without my knowledge, without my consent, you understand how that feels, yeah? Could this be something left over from the previous man who owned this ship? Does anyone remember, was this his cabin? Oh. That makes sense. Not sure if there would be something like a manifest or a, a designation left over in the files. I suppose we can look. Could it be some kind of psychic residue or something? I don't know what it is. It's not exactly my forte. I just, like I said, I only have funny feelings about this stuff for some reason. Well, uh, maybe for the time being, you should sleep in another room until we. Uh sort all of this out oh yeah the stabilizer should be very comfortable uh to slip in i'm not Once testing your machine for you molly i appreciate your help but uh, that's a bridge too far look i mean once the rotation problem is fixed you know if, if you're that worried just take my room i can sleep in the chair like i'm used to anyway I'd rather keep to myself, I think. Besides, I don't... I've seen the inside of your room. <laughs> or you can have mine. I'll sleep in the mess hall. All right. I, yeah, okay, very good. I appreciate the, the very masculine, chivalrous energy you're all giving. That's very good. I'll find my own place to lie. I'll make do in the galley or something. What I want is for this place to be locked down and to be monitored. If you have to get Harry, if you have to get uh, 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 Ifa, a any anybody to keep an eye on this, and, and hopefully, if there's any juice left in this this counter, to get more readings done. So that if it comes back, we can deal with it. I mean, we probably have some ten minutes tomorrow until the sensor burns out, so we might as well do a full ship clip. Um, let's right. put it in teams. So, Nova should be a good detector. Wait. I, I seen this movie. Let's stick together. Um, uh, let's let all stick together. Um, uh, let's go pick... Uh, I mean, Eb, do you need to be actively piloting this thing or can you leave it in auto for a while? Oh, yeah, I can put it on auto at any time. <laughs> As he just got done yelling at Eva. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I swear. Uh, let, let's that just... line, by the way, Eb, was hilarious. Like, hey, what's your favorite color? He's like, I don't see color like normal people anymore. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> All right. The correct answer was pink. Thank you very much. Uh, what's your favorite food? Combat rations. What flavor? It's not slamming us into asteroids flavored. Classic. Absolutely classic. <laughs> Love that. <sighs> Love that. Uh, he gets up and heads uh, heads towards the rest of the, uh, the crew. And as he passes the captain's chair, he goes... Uh, um uh the the meat flavor is my favorite and keeps walking. And as as he as he walks by, she looks back, she goes, Oh my god, mine too. Uh just fantastic. And she's just gonna kinda lounge in the captain's chair, uh like a like a cat. Like a giant human pink haired cat. 
what she's doing. But yeah, you head back, Eb, and you're all congregating. Harry heard his name from elsewhere. Um, he does not have the ice cream because he could not find it, um, since it is probably buried somewhere deep in the freezer. Uh, but he is there, and he is ready to help. All right, look, let's just do a simple sweep of the area with whatever devices. But after that, let's just focus on getting to where we need to go and make some money so we can actually survive. I'll yeah, like pay it. for an exorcism. It, oh, God. That's a good point. If we do find it, what do we do? Oh, salt. I heard salt works. Do we have any left? Or are we down that badly? We're down that badly. Damn it. You don't. You have some salt, but just those tiny little salt packets that don't have enough salt in them. You have like three of those. We need to go to a restaurant and take as many as we can. <laughs> so, right. uh, hey guys, what's 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 everybody doing back here? Uh, uh, okay, you won't believe this. Sis will, will just walk towards Ab and say, "Please come with me," and just escort him. And, and he, she'll she'll call back after her shoulder. We're team one. We'll be back here in 10 minutes. Excellent. So that's fantastic. Wait, so we're splitting? Oh, God. I suppose so. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah. yeah. How about we just go back to the cockpit and, like, this never happened. <laughs> Let's all sleep there for a week. How, how many of those Geiger counters do we have? I can make another one. I guess I'll be running let's, out of spare parts, but you know, uh, let's just we might need those spare parts to fix the ship if the autopilot doesn't work out. It's 100 credits worth of them. We could fix like the kitchen with them, but I guess so. Okay, so wait, did this go with Ed and no way of detecting this thing? They have the Geiger counter. Okay. Let's go with Nova, which is, you know, Geiger Counter 2. Uh, you are a replacement for a spare part. And yes, let's do a sweep. This isn't a good idea, but sure. <laughs> so Team 1 takes the starboard side of the ship. Team 2 takes the port side of the ship. Lucian, you are left alone with no Geiger Counter. What do you do? I... Lucian was was planning on going with Team Two. Perfect. So Team yes. Two is three yeah, strong. Please come. They're less likely yeah. to get eaten. Yeah. Uh, but Team One, let me tell you. So we do a bit of a montage of you guys moving around the ship, looking, scanning, doing your best to try and see if there's any psychic emanations. The Geiger counter stays flat, completely flat. Don't find anything on the starboard side of the ship. Go so ahead. a psychic three fingered giant is. Hanging out in your bed. I understand that it sounds like a setup to some particularly um, eldritch pornography, but it's it's true. Uh, I saw it. Nova saw it. It it sounds absurd, but it's it's real. And I, I I'm very concerned. Yeah, that's uh, just what we need is. Uh, psychic boogeymen living in our quarters because things aren't fucked enough as they already were for well, us. Well, Eb, I didn't invite it, now did I? I'm not blaming you, I'm just saying. Uh, it's just sometimes you have the, the tone of voice where it sounds like you're blaming people. Um, yeah, sorry, that's that's my dad speaking. I I know you, I know you still miss him. But not him. Well, I was trying to be delicate. <laughs> yeah. Regardless, hopefully this is uh, the the most nothing that it could be. Uh, perhaps it's just a, some sort of strange leftover from the previous tenants of the ship. But if it isn't, I'm I'm glad you're here. Yeah, no problem. Eb's uh, Eb's hand is kind of like hovering at his at the pistol on his hip. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hopefully he has some psychic bullets, but I digress. To pivot over to the port side of the ship, you have scanned rear of the ship. You've scanned kind of storage, the secondary batteries. Uh, you've scanned the sort of the bridge, some of the quarters on the port side, and finally you get to the little airlock that you've got. And uh, as you are about five feet from the airlock, Neon Nova, you see a big old giant. Kind of like you're seeing like uh like you're like walking and you see it like standing it turns and then runs away from you like this outline through the airlock door there's a little window you see it turn and run out of the airlock into the void of space uh, how bad of a headache is it <laughs> um not migraine level but, like, I had too much to drink the night before level. Okay. Well, um... I think it just ran out into space. So, I think we're fine. Uh, did it maintain momentum? Or did it, like, you know, like, there was wind, like... It just... It just stopped, looked, ran through, stopped, looked again, and then ran through again. I don't have, know. Have either of you ever heard of a creature like this before? Uh, no. You have not. My my head is uh, banging. Feels like I've been drinking all night. I, could, I don't this, even... could this be one of the void creatures we were told about? Mm. One of the dangers that the oracles always spoke of? I have started to think that they were just stories. You know, if you think about what that old guy, at least the guy we brought in, said, there's billions or maybe trillions of other species. This could be something else. Deckard Kane. <laughs> but, you know, Valkyrie uh, speaks of psychic. Point. Well, I don't know. I'm not comfortable with this. Oh, God. Thank the oracles. I, I, I blame him. I mean, the ball cap guy, it's all because of him. Ever since I saw him, uh, my head's always been hurting now. Okay, uh, look. I'll just I'll just take a few shots through the window. You know, my have a laser rifle. No, no, no. Just Let's not risk anything happening. Let's just leave it alone, and if it comes back, I mean, it'll we'll find out. You know what'll get rid of the psychic energy? Rapid decompression. Absolutely, that'll do it. That's, <laughs> yep. I, I don't feel like yeah. getting near an airlock, which can open up at any moment. I'm gonna go back to. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Nova, have, have you oh. spoken to Anna about these headaches? I think perhaps you should. Uh, you know, they joke about it, but I might later. Right now, we have a job to do, and I'd rather get to that. Uh, we've been on the run for six months. We rely on each other. And if one of us is is unwell, it could endanger all of us. I'd, I'd see her as soon as possible. I haven't had a headache until I saw that thing. It's been a, quite a long time. Oh, I feel um, one coming to an hour. I will talk to her about it, but in general, it could just could just be the stress. Let's just uh, head back and get back to our ships. Okay, Molly will press the intercom and press both buttons at once to make an announcement. Uh, I'm glad to announce that the giant invisible stalker with three fingers has left the ship. So nobody panic. Oh, oh, you didn't know. Right. Um, what do you mean a giant three-fingered monster? <laughs> what are you talking about? What, why does no one tell us anything when strange things happen? We have to find out over old comms. We, we literally are. And then you see her actually like poke her head around the corner. I'm literally 30 feet from where you are standing. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, 
this is why I prefer having a nice meeting on the fridge. Yes. She <laughs> usually, 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 Anna is very calm, cool, and collected. But in this particular moment, she was very flustered. And then she like regains her composure, crosses her hands. I'm sorry for my outburst. It's just these are things that I think all of the crew, all of the crew, it would be good to let them know. Well, in this case, we only just learned about it. But yes, we'll keep you apprised in the future. How long ago did you learn about it, Lucien? Five minutes ago. <laughs> but there was enough time in that five minutes to walk 50. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Meeting on the bridge then, Captain? Yes. I will talk about there and go from there. As you guys uh, go through the little meeting room, and uh, everyone congregates on the bridge. Uh, Freddy is snickering um, to himself as everyone else uh, congregates back on the bridge. I'll go I, and move I, everyone back over there. I've cocked my gun, Aoife. Oh, Eva <laughs> is, uh, as soon as she hears the door open, she is out of that like a cat that knows it's not supposed to be on the couch. And she is over at a console. It's good <sighs> right. I see we go but... straight to violence with your crew. That's That's scary, Captain. Yikes. <laughs> I like it. Click. Whoop. Someone's got to do it. Anyway. Right, where's Harry? I oh, know, you know what? I think Harry's fine. Anyway. Right, so uh, currently, what's what's our what's our projected landing time? In, in Two and Texas? a half days at this point. Good. We're going to have a bit of a time skip, a short time skip between... Once you're done with your meeting here and us arriving on Teus. Right, Teus. Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm running for efficiency, not for speed. All right. No. Good to know. Anyway, so the meeting today is to talk about it seems that something has well was on board our ship and it has vacated our ship the same way it came upon it. Uh, either way, it, I have some strange feeling in my head that it's some sort of Whatever it is, it's just something that doesn't appear very often. Um, what's, what's the word for it? Translucent? Uh, crap. What? Sis, uh, do you know a name for this thing? Transient? Oh, <laughs> that's a better way to say it. A transient being of some sort that seems to like touching our, uh, well, our, our residents scientists is bed for some reason and then deciding to run off the ship in the middle of the void of space so why why would it do that i i uh i would not know the answer i mean uh, someone that knows a lot more than this would probably be sis any possible answers to this conundrum there is a theory that we are floating around that perhaps it was the quarters of the person who originally uh, owned the ship. Uh, the psychic fellow from you uh, several years ago, you remember, Lucian. Um, but that is mere speculation at this point. The best we can offer are vague gestures at an answer until we can possibly encounter this being again and establish some kind of communication with it, we can only shrug. Right. And so I wish for everyone to not worry about it. If it comes back, we we will have, we, we can find ways of finding it out. But either way, it, it seems to have left the ship entirely. So. Wait, wait a minute. Not worry about it. Was... Great, great plan. <laughs> yeah, is the mattress new? Perhaps it was looking for something. You said it was touching your mattress? Yes, I'm not sure why it was there. My bed, which is usually made neatly and militarily, as you all know. And as I exhort you to do as well, and you continually refuse to do. It was uh, made uh, a mess. And there was this creature crouching and pressing into it for some reason. Oh, God. It was looking for something, perhaps. We should cut your mattress open. Sorry to ruin your bedroom further. But, all right, you know, all right. 
let's just not worry about that right now. How about we just close off the bedroom and we just get to our location. If it comes back, it comes back, all right? We don't have to worry about it too much if we don't know what the hell to do. And even if we did find what, what it is or what it's, you know, find a way to communicate, we have no way of doing anything to it. So that would probably be a very bad idea to anger whatever this thing is. Good point. So. Or we could cut open this mattresses. You know, I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> Molly. Didn't you, didn't you hit the captain, Molly? We're not supposed to worry about it. For now. Oh, I'm sure you're not worried about it. I'm definitely sure you're not worried at all about it. Molly, Molly why is your why is your uh, your go-to uh, plan always to just gut it? <laughs> okay, yeah, I did wind up modifying my chin sword a little bit, and I wanted to try that. Okay. That's okay. You may have a point. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Molly, do not, and I will say this again, do not go in there and rip that mattress apart, or else you're sleeping in the brig every night. We have a brig? Close enough. <laughs> Call the bathroom. Oh. We just. <laughs> <laughs> or is my room to no, I can't trust you in your room. You might start chopping up mattresses. Yikes. <sighs> Yikes. Well, as the meeting ends, we cut to a exterior shot of the condor, and we watch as it continues to sort of slingshot. Over the coming days, Molly, you put together this stabilization device and Eb uh, gets a couple more critiques from Freddy, but, but they become more seldom because he actually knows you're good at your job. He's just bored. Um, there's some awkward tension between uh, Anna and Lucian. Uh, she doesn't avoid him, but like doesn't actively seek him out anymore. And, um, and Harry keeps talking about how he, uh, he misses company. Just he'll bring it up and be like, miss, I miss company. Wish company would come back. Uh, he brings it up a few times, but nothing too crazy. And, uh, yeah. And, and Lucian has been observing Sis. How's Sis been over the, say, two and a half days of travel? Um, uh, anxious. Uh, irritated. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the crew's frivolity about this whole thing. Or, sorry, not frivolity, but, um, uh, laissez-faire kind of attitude about this mm -hmm. um, and increasingly more sort of isolated. Mm. Okay. 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 But the ship has is within communications range of planet Teus at this point. And you are close enough to where if you want to access the planet's sort of intranet uh, which is ne not necessarily directly connected to the Oracle Net, which we're calling it nowadays. Um, you may do so to start to do some research into, well, what the heck is going on? Mm -hmm. So, take it away, gentlemen. Let's start our our research phase of our upcoming mission. So, it's who owns the this facility? Do we know? Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal question. I'm going to have you do a hacking check. I'm going to do a hacking check to see if you can get that. So this is going to be an answer to a specific question. Or uh, could Lucian ask, just be standing there spitting out the questions and someone else be doing the hacking? Oh, absolutely. Whoever wants to do the uh, hacking. Yeah. That's, that's the duty of the comms, which mm -hmm. is sister's job, <laughs> which currently not there. Awkward. That's awkward. Well, we'll role play it out a little bit. We'll role play it out a little bit. It's all good. <sighs> all right. So, if we pull up the sensors, uh, what is the closest city to the outpost? The closest city 
to the outpost is a it is a not a large city maybe a few thousand people it's mostly like a like a workers city basically when this area was heavily mined it was like one of those little mining towns that kind of sprung up and a couple people still live there but these conditions are rapidly getting worse as is with most of the planet um and it's called russ just r-u-s-s russ russ town r-u-s-s town russ town i'll go yeah, ahead and russ type that in the chat mm -hmm. russ town r-u-s-s maybe the, town maybe the slang for it is rust town because it's so rust crappy town. and rusty it's yep you got it it's not very creative but yes <laughs> that's exactly it it's rust town yep it's all rusty but uh right. doing the doing the little bit of a uh, little bit of research and what i'll do is i'll actually uh i'll pull up this is character sheet real quick and that would be a hacking is a int program we go program let's go int which is a one submit all right so sis is actually very quickly able to identify who owns it and so you know how, like, there's multiple different cereal brands, but really, there's only, like, one or two companies that own all the cereal brands? You know how that exists? Like, there's Kellogg's. Mm -hmm. Kellogg's is pretty much, like, there's a couple of, like, main parent companies that really own all the cereal companies, right? Or, like, for most food and products and things like that. Uh, it's kind of like that. Like, you you find that there's a company that owns it. So it's, it's a small sort of more local mining company um, that's kind of like going out of business and hasn't done much business recently. Then you start to kind of follow the trail and you're like, okay, that's owned by that. That's owned by that. That's owned by that. How deep do you want to go, everyone? That's my question is, how deep does the crew want to go down this rabbit hole to see who owns this? Well, Lucia will go all the way. All the way deep. He, he, would, he would recommend for Sis to go all the way. All right. Sis isn't uh, here to argue. So, Neon, Captain, what do you want to do? If we're going to be stealing from them, and judging by the information we're given, it might not hurt to know what they are, but if we dig too deeply, it could also cause us very bad repercussions in the future. So. Yeah, why is this useful information, you know? Why do you want to know, Lucian? Well, I just if stealing from from a company is one thing. Uh, I wouldn't want to injure innocent guards just for our profit. Okay, we're not going to injure them then, unless no. they injure us first. I'll just ask them very nicely. But if this was an oracle holding, well then that would change everything, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Okay, I can see where you're going. Yeah, let's go deep then. You follow the trail. Jeez. You go down the rabbit hole. Follow the white rabbit, as it were. And it actually takes a good amount of time digging, following trails. This goes to here, this goes to there, this goes to here. It almost seems as though it has been buried, this information. It takes actually several hours to start digging through this stuff. Sis is good at her job. She works diligently. Eventually, a single name pops up. Paralect. P-E-R-E-L-E-C-T. Paralect. Paralect holdings that is where the trail ends now based on all the information you can gather about Paralect, sis Paralect is apparently owned by no one but the name Paralect, that all rings a very very loud bell in your ears there are three oracles main oracles sort of the heads and then there is a supreme chancellor one of the oracles is named Oracle Paralect. Now, it doesn't specifically say it's owned by him, but the symbol of this organization, this company, this parent company that owns everything, 
is a sword with a key as the handle and a sort of silver blade. And that is the that is the symbol of office for Oracle uh, Paralect. So it all you know, you know, they're not they're not they're not really trying to hide who owns it. Right. They're just not actively saying who owns it. Right? And the key that he has has a a club symbol built into the sort of te- te- teeth of the key. Um, and if you actually pull up the Oracles of Redemption in our Discord, you can see he is the first one on the left-hand side of the four that are there. That is uh, the Oracle Paralect. Uh, but apparently this is owned by him. So mm-hmm. do with that as you see fit. I mean, money-wise... We shouldn't be worried, right? This this shouldn't draw too much attention. Sorry for Scott saying us. No, but uh, we're gonna have to go by. Have you have you all worked on your code names like I asked you all to? I mean, I'm called Molly, and there's like nine thousand Ramirez, so don't don't worry about me. I was uh-huh. thinking about uh-huh. uh, instead of Ifa, I was thinking about Tifa. That makes sense. Um. Oh on the nose okay. i'm not really good at names i don't know sorry right. i think i have one the name of my old man servant mercio sir okay no i was gonna go with wings sure sure mercio wing cool what about you sis I guess this is technically, you know. I'm sorry, I did not know we were still doing the code names thing. <laughs> well, I mean, well, while we're on the field, it makes sense. So maybe. Well, if Link? if if the information is correct, and if they were to hear our names, if anything, they would hear our names. When specified, then you know the people that have been hunting us the last, well, who we've been running from might start paying more close attention after. Yes, so, we definitely want to conceal our identity during this job. We don't want. I could use facial and voice recognition and noses, regardless of what fancy names we use. All right, let's get some clown masks. <laughs> now that might actually be helpful. That actually might be useful, but. Oh, right. Oh. Okay, okay, I'll go by Blink. And yeah, and this you can be sister. That works. So which one of you is Bozo? <laughs> I, uh, I'd rather not be. Probably Freddy over there. Wait, I'm 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 not coming. I'll guard the ship. I don't like I don't like dying a, a horrible coughing death with my lungs filled with poisonous red clouds. That just sounds terrible. Oh, so you'll be coward. Good. All right. Yeah, that yeah, perfect. Yeah, coward, coward, uh, aka alive. Yeah, that sounds great. Absolutely. Right. Speaking of, do we have enough um, rebreathers for the everyone on the on the mission? I don't know. No. Did you save enough money? No. No, but just hides his in his bag. I'm like, nope. Uh huh. <laughs> I will say this: that realistically, as long as you're not on the planet for several days, any kind of dust that you breathe in, some simple medical treatment should clear it out. So just don't move on to the planet permanently. Yes, and she is correct about that. The red cough isn't something that you could just contract in a single day. So, though there have been cases where just a simple exposure can cause rapid um, decompression of your lungs, and uh, you suffocate instantly. But it is very I, rare. Very rare. Minute. How did your family avoid uh, contracting it? Nova. Ah, uh, we had the money. <laughs> to uh, have rebreathers at all times of the day. So it must have just, been nice, yeah. Captain, to come from a family of wealth and prosperity. 
how unfortunate it is that you find yourself the captain of a runaway crew. I think it's more liberating <laughs> than what I used to live used to live at. So that gets a genuine chuckle out of Anna, and she nods her head in sort of a respectful nod. Uh, Atmo filters are too expensive. We can't afford to. We there are one hundred crates each, so just grab a wet rack. It's it's fine. I I have the survival training to at least feed us the basic delicacies of my home planet. Red beetles, oh, oh. red red cats, red cows. No, red everything. <laughs> red weasels. I mean, everything's so, not wait. actually red. It's just covered in red dust. This town. Is small, so if a ship lands there, it will draw not notice. Mm. I wouldn't. It wouldn't be too. We don't have to worry about that. Ships can come and have to go. It's a so, part of the process. What I'll give you, Nova, as a as a native of Teus, is that there are similar to the red planet that we know as Mars. There are giant dust storms that kick up that don't do much in the way of making it hard. To, like navigation's a little difficult, but for whatever reason, the dust doesn't really affect engines. So you could see if there's any local storms, use that as cover to land. I'll just give that to you as a as a free no, since you're from the planet. You have some insight into uh, the normal weather patterns, as it were. All right. Well, look, it's not usually the most of the planets always you always need a vehicle for traveling. It's you're, there's no way you're going to do it on foot, but if you want to be a little more safe about it. An old trick that someone taught me was to always use the sandstorms for cover if you want to hide your tracks. So that would be our best way to do it. If we want to get to the town and gather a little bit more information, I might maybe find some people that might be able to maybe be a guide for us, especially since we're going into a more, uh, well, older complex that could, you know, Maybe someone from there knew something about it, right? Aoife, from the console she just moved to, types up, doesn't even look back, but says, hey, hey, who knows? Maybe it's haunted with psychic ghosts. It was right. a joke. Oh, my God. You guys are so... I mean, it will by the oracles are all so edgy. <laughs> Jeez. They take a chill pill, I swear. Uh, I mean, look... It's either a ship with ex with unstable explosives like ghosts, or a planet with unstable explosives and like ghosts. So basically the same shit. And suffocation from uh, airborne dust, but you know. Well, have you checked our filters? We are three days away from that. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just adding on to the caveat. Anyway. All right. Well, Eb, let's let's start heading down. Let's try to find a sandstorm and ride it all the way to the nearest town. Money no, cap. Rust town. And uh, I'm going to have you make a pilot check here, Eb, to see how soft the landing is. Uh, if things go poorly, we'll crash land on the planet Teus. And uh, that'll be that. No, I'm just kidding. And that's where our campaign ends, in a fiery explosion. <laughs> uh, psychic ghosts, who cares? <laughs> You're all dead. Just kidding. Mm. But go ahead and make that. Visibly annoyed, sis stands and leaves. Pilot, the modifier, Smith, and that's Dex. Uh, and Smith. Boom. It's a pretty smooth ride down. You do see there is a large plot convenient sandstorm that has kicked up, a dust storm. You're able to ride that very close to the town, but far enough away to where you're not landing in the city proper. You can hide by some of the many rolling hills of this particular region. And uh, as we watch the ship come to a uh, landing, we see the sandstorm, the red dust of the planet, whipping up and around the ship. And uh, as the crew places wet cloths over their mouths, the, the long sort of uh, gangplank extends down from the ship, allowing you to depart that, my friends, is where we're going to end today's session with you guys arriving on Teus. Mm -hmm. And uh, next session, you guys will head into town, begin a little bit of research into maybe a guide, and then make your way over to the facility to get some of that sweet, sweet, very unstable fuel. It'll be great. But great session, everyone. An absolute delightful time. 
As I always say at the, at the end of every session, any final thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns from the players before we get ready to wrap up today's uh, today's episode? What did you think, Dear Wolf, of the uh, more adult versions of our characters this time? They felt... <laughs> so I personally loved them. Mm -hmm. I personally loved them because I could see, at least from my perspective, I could see the children in them mixed with this more sort of seriousness. Um, and having lived through and played with you guys as your younger mm -hmm. selves, even though it was very brief, I think it worked, personally. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's all in my head. Maybe I just really want it to work, so I'm just forcibly saying it did. But it felt like this This. This could have been our first session, but this felt to me more natural and there was a better flow and everyone seemed very comfortable with each other. Um, so I'd say it worked well, but I'm also mm -hmm. the game master. What does everyone else think? <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought... No, the, I, I, thought, I agree. Yeah, yeah sorry. I, I thought the last two... Uh, uh, sessions you know really helped inform uh my character you know like mm -hmm. uh i don't know if i'm ex explaining it correctly but yeah I, um i'm glad it worked you know it was on a, yeah it was, i felt like i was on very solid footing it was a, it was an experiment i've never done anything like mm -hmm. that before but i figured like this mm -hmm. sort of narrative a little bit more like you know no real rolling we're just going to mm -hmm. kind of experience it and we're going to kind of have this shared collaborative backstory i I hope you guys feel more connected with each other because of that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, again, like in that moment where she asked you, Lucian, Charles, mm -hmm. like, have you seen this? Hit creative license. I will ask other okay. players sure, similar sure. things like about you, know, you with their perspective, because I want you guys to feel like you can maybe help collaboratively fill in any holes that might exist. Awesome. Obviously, we don't want to take player agency away from others, but mm -hmm. again, we're in this together. We're creating this world. We're creating our. We have these shared backstory. We're creating everything together, and and I'm I'm you're helping me create this setting as much as I'm explaining the setting to you, right? But like mm -hmm. I said before, if I wanted to write a book, I'd write a book. I don't want to do that. Right. I want to collaboratively yeah. tell a story with a group of intelligent, passionate role players, and then it will develop mm -hmm. as we go. And obviously, I'll set different things. There'll be psychic ghosts, whatever. You know, mm -hmm. um, things will happen. But I'm very excited for uh, for us to be on Teus. And like, part of what we're going to do on Teus is we're going to explore Teus a little bit. We're going to learn a little bit more about its culture, a little bit more about the people. Um, maybe learn a bit, a little bit more about the Red Death, and we're going to start to flush things out. So as we explore this system. We'll flush the system out at some point. I assume you guys will head off into different sectors, as it were, and um, that's that's what it'll be. And we're just gonna we're gonna see where the story takes us. And we're starting off in a smash and grab. At some point, maybe you guys will be leading battle fleets against each other. I don't know. Maybe you'll <laughs> all end up dead and eaten by psychic ghosts. Who knows? But uh, any other questions? Or blown that by uh, possibly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Any other questions or concerns? That was a great question, Charles. Appreciate that. Anything uh -huh. else? Wonderful. Well, as I always say at the end of every session, seriously, thank you so much to the players for playing. Without you guys, this is literally impossible, and I genuinely appreciate it. Um, my, my life's been a little chaotic lately, and for the last two hours, two and a half hours since we've been hanging out, I kind of forgot about all my problems. So I really appreciate it, guys. So thank you. Um, thank you to the viewers for viewing. I want to say a special thanks to Raw Big Mac. Um, that actually sounds like a very odd meal, but um, thanks for the follow. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, happy gaming, everybody. We'll see these beautiful people back here next Tuesday, same game time, same game place, for session four of Deanima and Fernie, where they will be uh, doing a, a smash and grab, which is going to be awesome. But in the meantime, be well, be safe. Again, happy gaming. Good night, everybody. <laughs>